My name is Aaliyah Burke and I'm the Assistant Director of Recreation, Fitness and Wellness for UMBC. Thank you for joining us today. Um, I'd like to introduce Adam Sachs. He is the campus dietitian and he will um, share some information about how we can keep on track during the holiday season. Thank you, Adam. Hi everyone, thanks for joining. Um, again, my name is Adam Sachs. I am the campus dietitian at UMBC. Um, I work with Charwell, so the dining services, but also do uh, individual appointments for students, staff, or faculty. Um, so I'm going to get started, share my screen, do a short presentation, and then we'll have a question and answer afterwards. All right. So kind of quick overview of some of my like healthy holiday tips. Um, you know, I think a big one is a lot of people are worried about weight gain during the winter months, during the holiday months. Um, so, you know, one thing just to kind of put people's minds at ease, the, the average weight gain of, you know, true actual weight gain is actually very minimal uh, for most people. You know, the average person between November and January, so, you know, three months or so, the average gain is only about a pound and a half to two pounds of actual weight. Um, so nothing major. I think I think where a lot of people are, you know, worried about that weight gain or something like that is where they're maybe feeling it in their clothes or feeling like, um, you know, heavy or bloated or something after certain holiday meals, holiday parties, things like that. So a lot of that just has to do with what kind of foods you're eating, um, beverages you're drinking, things, you know, along a lot of that nature. So a lot of the, the foods that we're going to have during the holidays, you know, most of them are going to be relatively high in salt, relatively high in sugar and um, relatively high in fat, which all three of those things actually just kind of will fluctuate the amount of water in your body. Um, they kind of make you hold on to more water and can make you feel a little bit bloated, um, but it is temporary. So a lot of times, you know, after a big holiday, you might feel a little bloated. You might feel a little, you know, tight around certain clothes and, and areas. Um, a lot of that is just very, very temporary based on, you know, slightly different kind of types of food you're eating. Um, especially sugar and salt really do make you hold on to water, but it is only a, you know, thing that'll last maybe a day, two tops. Um, usually your body's able to regulate that extra water out pretty pretty efficiently. Um, so that's where, you know, if you're seeing, um, you know, even a uh, small amount of weight gain after a big holiday meal, most of that is just water. And that's just your body holding on to extra water because of the, you know, extra salt, extra sugar. Um, another thing is a lot of times where we're, you know, drinking alcohol during the, the holidays, um, that too will adjust your fluid count. It makes you hold on to extra water. It in general doesn't process through your system quite as quickly as like you know drinking any other non-alcoholic beverage. So you're just again getting extra water or fluid into your system that's hanging around a little bit longer. Um, so that can contribute to again some very temporary weight gain. Um, but again, it will get regulated out relatively quickly. But if you look, you know, the next day after a big meal where you've ate and drank a little bit, you're going to notice it, but it'll go away in a, in a day or two. Um, next thing is beverages make a big difference. I think a lot of times, a lot of your holiday beverages are very, very high calorie. And that's something that a lot of us don't necessarily have on a regular basis, but are certainly incorporated during the holiday season and something that can definitely add up. Um, you know, think about, you know, a lot of your beverages with added sugars, ciders, hot chocolate, coffee drinks, you know, the Starbucks comes out with their holiday ones every year. Um, eggnog as well, you know, it's very high in usually fat, high in sugar as well. Um, so all those, you know, have a lot of added sugars, have a lot of added calories. So that's just one thing that you know it's easy to drink your calories when you when you think about it it's, it doesn't fill you up as much as like eating your calories easy to drink several hundred calories without you know feeling like you had that much and it's you know a lot of times it's the hot beverage because it's cold outside or you know something like that so it's kind of serving a purpose but you don't realize how much is calories are in it um, and that's where portion size is really going to be a big factor with a lot of those things is, you know normally we're we're not having these kinds of beverages in this time of year we are and, so just watch the portion size of some of those. Um, some kind of tips with that, you can find sugar-free hot chocolates that taste just as good. Um, you know, if you're getting like an apple cider or a pear cider, look for no sugar added. Again, those taste just as good, but again, a lot less sugar in those. Um, and also kind of like what I said before, alcoholic beverages also have a lot of calories. Um, they might not actually have a lot of carbs or a lot of sugar in them, but what a lot of people don't realize is alcohol itself has calories. So that's where the majority of the calories are going to come from in any alcoholic beverage. So if you, you know, if you look at, you know, a typical beer or a glass of wine, yes, they're going to have a few grams of carbs or a few grams of sugar, but most of the calories in that beverage is coming from the alcohol itself. Um, so again, you know, think about it, it's easy to have 
um, you know, a few drinks at a holiday party. And those are, you know, those drinks may be 100, 150 calories each just because of the alcohol content. So something that can add up without you realizing it, definitely. Um, so just, you know, portion control, watch the number of things you're having, you know, uh, along with those beverages in terms of snacks, in terms of meals, things like that. So a lot of times it's just a lot of high calorie stuff all at once. Next, um, just keeping up with your exercise routine. A lot of times we do get a little bit more busy during the holiday season. Um, if you you know have a good exercise routine going, definitely try and stick to it even with the holidays coming up. If you currently aren't exercising a lot and would like to do so more, try and get it started right now while we still have a little bit of time before you know really get into the holiday season. If you can establish some sort of plan, some sort of routine, um, it's definitely gonna you know benefit you during the holidays. A lot of times you know we'll get busy and the exercise falls off. And then, you know, combination of, yes, we're exercising less and then we're eating a little bit more. Um, you know, that's where you do might see, you feel a little sluggish or you do, you know, see a small amount of weight gain. And then just a couple, you know, good strategies to think about. Um, at any, you know, big holiday meal, put a bunch of veggies on your plate. You know, those fill you up first. Um, not a lot of calories and you're getting plenty of nutrients in there. So add tons of veggies. You know, there's plenty of side dishes, plenty of good things you can get, you know, good veggies with. Um, you know, a lot of your winter squash, green beans, things like that are in season. So have plenty of those. Um, be conscious of your leftovers. So any one like, you know, major holiday is not going to, you know, throw you off track. You know, one day is not going to do anything. Um, so whether it's Thanksgiving or Christmas or, or whatever, um, one day is not really going to throw you off. But if you're having all those leftovers from those meals, you know, three, four, five days in a row afterwards, a lot of times we end up overdoing it the week afterwards because we have all these leftovers in our house. Um, so that's really where you want to kind of focus on is not overdoing it the next few days. Sure, enjoy yourself during the holiday, have a good time. Just the next few days, you know, watch what you're doing for leftovers. You know, you know it's easy to have a slice of pie for breakfast. I've done that. But just, you know, be conscious of that. Again, portion size with that, but, you know, try not to have Thanksgiving meal four days in a row. You know, try having that one day, managing those, those uh, leftovers the next few days. Next is uh, listening to your hunger cues. So a lot of times it's very easy to overeat past the point where our stomach tells our brain that we're full. Um, so if you go to, you know, get a second plate or get a second helping of something, give yourself five or 10 minutes before you do that. You know, if you decide you're more hungry, you want something else, wait it out five or so, five, 10 minutes. Um, usually it does take a little bit of time for your stomach to recognize that it is full, doesn't, you don't need anything else, and it'll send a signal to your brain after that that says, I'm full, I'm good. Um, but it does take a little bit of time to get to that point. So if you're having a plate and then all of a sudden you want to grab another plate, just give yourself a break, just, you know, five minutes, kind of think of how you're actually feeling, you know, hunger, fullness wise. Um, it can definitely make a difference if you just wait a, a few minutes. Next, uh, don't overcompensate for any, you know, high intake days. So again, like I said, those holidays, um, you know, whether it's, you know, Thanksgiving or you have a holiday party or something like that, don't compensate by having very, very little food the next day. You want to, you know, have a decent amount of food, have something that you would normally have. If you're going, you know, between having very high intake and then very low intake, it can kind of mess with your metabolism a little bit. We don't want to do that. Um, so just kind of make it be a normal day the day after, you know, nothing too much and nothing too little, just kind of a normal every day, um, you know, in terms of your meals and snacks. Um, another thing, you know, be mindful of fast food or convenience foods. Again, just with being busier, um, a little bit, you know, running around. It's easy to grab those convenience foods, easy to grab those frozen pizzas, something like that. So try to be conscious of that. Um, you know, a couple of weeks before you really have a busy week, you know, try and maybe prep something to freeze in the, in, uh, you know, meal wise, freeze it in the freezer. And if you have some portions of easy, something to come back, just heat it up as soon as you get home. Um, definitely something easier than, you know, trying to stop somewhere and grabbing food. It'll save you a little bit of money. And obviously, you know, don't want to be eating out too, too much. Um, and lastly, you know, don't feel guilty about enjoying yourself during the holidays. Like I said, there's not a really major amount of weight gain that actually happens in, you know, the truest sense of the word. Um, and like I said, those one days are really not going to throw you off. It's just kind of managing this, the in-between times, you know, after those major holidays or holiday events. Um, and I'm going to open it up for questions. Um, if anyone would like a copy of the handout, just feel free to email me, either me or Aaliyah. Um, we'd be happy to distribute it out to anybody. Um, but, you know, feel free to ask any questions, whether it's in the chat or just live, um, whatever anybody wants to do. Do you, um, 
Um, this might be putting you on the spot, so I apologize if it is. But do you know any like websites or anything that would have information on making like traditional meals healthier or anything like that? Any recommendations for that? Sure. Um, so let's see. The USDA has kind of a a uh, offshoot of it's offshoot of the USDA website, but it is, I believe, you can either type in. Um, SNAP education or SNAP education, or um, it's also through University of Maryland. So you can either type in SNAP education or University of Maryland extension um, and just look for like healthy holiday meals, something like that. I can type that in the chat because it was it was kind of specific. Um, but those are a few organizations that have like really good resources for healthy holiday meals, cooking on a budget during the holidays. All kinds of stuff like that. Let me enter that in the chat just for people to see. But those are two really good resources. Again, if you just kind of search USDA and like holiday meals or healthy holidays, that should probably get you where you need to go. Great, thank you. Does anybody else have any questions or um, anything that he talked about? I think I just saw a question roll in in the chat. Um, yeah, I know, obviously not a lot of parties this year, most likely. Uh, so let's see, for the leftovers. Um, Yeah, so obviously things will probably be a little different this year. Um, and that's just is something, you know, keep in mind if you do are going to have like a small gathering, you know, taper down your recipes from what you would normally do. You know, if you're normally going to make a recipe that's going to feed 15, 20 people, you're going to want to try and, you know, cut that in half at least. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind. I know where, you know, you have your kind of good recipes that you're used to making and it's easy to make the full batch, you know, regular size. But, you know, especially this year with probably not going to have huge gatherings, you're going to end up with a ton of leftovers of, you know, those relatively, you know, heavy holiday foods sometimes. Um, so just something to keep in mind, you know, kind of paper down those recipes a little bit. Um, you don't have to change them in terms of, you know, making them like healthier, but just portion size is going to make a big difference. So you're not going to wind up with all this extra food. Anything else? Any other questions? All right. It looks like that is it. Thank you, Adam. Um, I do want to let everybody know that we do have our last talk of the year on December 7th at 1 p.m. Um, watch on my UMBC for more information about that, as well as Instagram. Um, we'll be posting about that. Please feel free to reach out to Adam or to myself if you have any questions um, that come up later or if you would think of an idea, uh, maybe a webinar that you would like to see um, about nutrition. Um, we would love to hear your ideas. So thank you, everybody, for joining us today and have a great day. Thank you.